Okay, welcome to a um, probably not so short overview of my anodizing setup that I built two years ago. Uh, but I've got a really refined since towards the end of last year. I've been doing a lot of anodizing, like probably into the 300 or so parts already, just since November. So I've been really running the shit out of it and I've got it fucking down. So uh, we're going to give a quick run over of the process, my, my specific process, some pros and cons, uh, shit you should watch out for. Uh, and then yeah, just a run over of my system. Let's get to it. Okay, so this is my anodizing setup. I've got a 30 litre tank down the bottom here. It's usually full to about halfway. Um, for chilling my system, I use frozen two litre and one litre Coca-Cola bottles, uh, or Pepsi bottle, whatever bottles I have. I fill them with water, put them in a freezer, and then uh, usually I'll drop three of them in there to pre-chill the system and uh, bring my temperature down to below like 18-ish degrees C. This gets pumped up into a water jacket around my acid tank. I have a four liter acid tank in there in a bigger container that has a water jacket around it. This has got bicarbonate, uh, bicarbonate of soda. So if I do have an acid spill, it'll self-neutralize. Um, so that's my, my cooling of my acid I'm using a five amp power supply that I bought, uh, it's like a hobby power supply. And then this tube here is extraction. So I'm pulling fumes out all the time. Uh, next, we're going to look at my pre-processing setup. With running mag bases, I was having an issue where I was having to scrub the things for bloody ever to get, uh, to get them clean enough to anodize. So I implemented this, the jug. Uh, basically what I do is I drop my batch, so mag base are either four or six at a time, same with belts or four at a time, even loops are four at a time. And then I bought a bottle of acetone for this. This is how much is evaporated in the parts that I've done. So what I do is I put my parts, cover them in acetone, hook them out and let them uh, lay them here to just evaporate off and then put my acetone away. This stuff evaporates so quickly if you leave it in the tub, you will lose it in no time. So pre-clean with acetone. Uh, let that turn evaporate off. Then over there, I've got 40 degrees, uh, 40 degree uh, clean green or simple green. Uh, quite strong mix. Uh, my parts will come from acetone. They get a quick scrub down there, sprayed with water, do a water break test. When it passes that, my racking station is here. So let me just grab a rack. Uh, Generally my racks, these like this is my titanium racking for the Glock 19 mag bases. That will sit across there. So as I wash, I rack. And then I'll wash the next one and rack it. Once those are racked, they get rinsed off in my uh, distilled water that sits next to there. That's my first stage wash, where I wash after racking, after neutralizing, and after uh, my lar. Then up here is my caustic soda mix or lime mix. It's quite a vigorous mix, like as much as I could dissolve into the water. So I will acetone, wash my part, rack it, rinse it, rack it, rinse it, and then it goes into caustic soda for two minutes. I've got a one minute timer for my neutral, so I just run that twice. Then I rinse it off generally down here and not up there because I don't want my light to overflow. And then goes back into the soap solution for another minute. Then it gets rinsed off again with a spray bottle and then sits in the pre-wash until I'm ready to load it into the acid tank. Then it gets put in the acid tank. I've got um, oops, Micro Deans connectors on all of my racking. It's these little guys here. So that I can quickly plug and unplug my racking because previously I had screw terminals which are just a freaking ball ache. So that's so I can quickly change out. Then it'll sit there with power for 45 minutes. And uh, after that, neutralize for a minute, stand in water for a minute, and then into the DAR for an appropriate amount of time. Once it goes out of the DAR, it gets put into the sealant for 15 to 30 minutes, depends on what the, what the run is and whether I can get away with longer. Okay, with my setup, this is by far the most important thing. What I found is these elements that I'm using, I would go through one in about uh, a month to two months because I was leaving them submerged in my dyes. So now I need to do a dye change quickly. 
So this whole thing just racks off, wash it down, all with distilled water. I go through distilled water like it's going out of fashion. Okay, then it goes up on the wall here. This is where it gets stored between anodizing runs. I put it up there so that the elements are not in the dark. Now the purple can come down and the orange can go up. Okay. Now to get these things open. Uh, push my bar in. Put my temperature pickup in. And this thing comes off the wall. Down there, onto there. Make sure the element is fully submerged. Okay, once the parts come out of the sealant, they get rinsed off, dried with a air gun, and then they go into this 3D printed basket in my yogurt tub. So this stays submerged, I throw the parts in, let them sit for a few minutes, then it comes out here and I let them drain. Um, that's just, it's literally uh, air tool lubricating oil, like an S10, so quite a, quite a thin oil. I was using Q20 or WD-40 but I was going through so much of it it wasn't feasible so I have a tub of oil I move my parts in there bring them out have a cloth rag on hand to wipe the oil off this rag lasts like 20-30 parts and then it's just saturated with oil but it's a way to oil your parts and make them look get that get that shiny finish you want without having to use a ton of Q20 or WD-40 and then down there is my other dyes so I have Apparently eight different dyes mixed up. Uh, blue reacts with one of my metals, well, with one of my parts, so I can't actually use it for those, but yeah. Um, I've got green, violet, gray, black, red, blue, and orange. And uh, then I've got that reservoir thingy there that I bought specifically for refilling my spray bottle. So I throw distilled water in it, that when I'm anodizing and I need water in a hurry, I can literally just put it under the tap, open it up, fill up my, my distilled water bottle and be back to anodizing because that was a real problem trying to pour water down there's my spare sealant I mix that up and every about third or fourth top up on the sealant tank I will use mixed sealant otherwise it's just distilled water that I put in um, the last and most important thing is let's just move my camera here um, with regard to the system or anodizing in general. When I started, I was using printer ink. It can be done, um, but your results batch to batch are just all over the show. I ended up ordering from Caswell, which uh, cost me $115 in shipping alone. Uh, being in the arse end of Africa, that is just what it is. Um, but those dyes, I have a five liter system, or one gallon system. So I will, I buy the dye, I decant it, I then, decant half of it back into the bottle and I mix up half of it at a time. So I get two batches of dye out of every bottle, which is not too bad going. But when I order more, I just double my order every time. So I get double the quantities that I need because the shipping is so exorbitant. Uh, with regards to the sealant, use sealant, don't use sealant, make no freaking difference. Um, I used to seal in just water. I now have additives in my sealant, gives a bit of a stronger anodize in my opinion. But I don't know if that's even true. So I have I use their sealant, I buy the one pound bag, get my wife to divide it up like drugs into uh, one ounce packs and then I throw one ounce into, into one gallon, so 30 grams into a five litre and that seems to do the trick. Um, the caustic soda is just drain cleaner, the acid is battery acid, I did some fancy maths to get mine to the concentration I needed. Um, with regards to the power supply, you're going to need a proper power supply, like don't try and do it with a PC power supply, they don't like that. Um, I did try a RC battery charger, they didn't like that either. Um, I tried a transformer, I got some results there and then the transformer blew up. So I ended up buying a proper power supply, like it's just one of those things you're going to have to do if you want to try anodizing. The ceiling, you can use a little single plate stove, that's what I was doing, but this uh, deep fryer is way more efficient, like significantly more efficient than, that, uh, than a, a pot on a stove is. So just bear that in mind when you do your setup. Also, if you can get little elements, just don't store them in your dyes and you'll be A for away. I was having to replace really often. 
But yeah, that's a run over of my anodizing setup. I'll post some pictures of, well, some B-roll now, of my anodizing, that are the results I'm getting out of my setup. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. Um, hit a like and subscribe, and also check out the bolt belt. It's uh, one of the videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.